Hello, differential equation students, and welcome back. We are going to be getting into unit four now. This is unit. Get my pen to work here. This is unit number four, and this unit is actually going to be entirely over systems of differential equations. I'm going to start out with 3.3. This will actually be a very simple section because here what I want to work on is I actually want to model, okay, so I want to work on developing specific models that we learned back in section 3.1. But the big thing here is um, in 3.1 we didn't solve, so actually in 3.3 we're not going to necessarily solve these right away. We're just going to work on setting them up, okay. So now would be a great time to go ahead and pause the video, get everything or read this initial statement and copy down my two um, differential equations down here, dx, dt, and dy, dt. So now that you've had a chance to copy that stuff down and read the idea here, I talk about like wolves and deer. Um, here, we're talking about kind of the amount of wolves. This would be like wolves. And then this would be deer. And dt, that would probably be time. In this case, we're talking about time. So as time goes on, how many wolves would I have? How many deer would I have? Well, of course, the amount of wolves, right, this amount of wolves up here depends technically on the deer, which is exactly why there's a y here, okay? And likewise, the amount of deer depends on how many wolves I have. Oh, that's why there's an x here, okay? It also depends on how long the system has been going. That's why we have these t's. And, of course, it also depends on how many of each we have, right? The more wolves we have, the more mouths we need to feed, the more deer we would need, right? But as the deer die, then some of the wolves will die. Oh, well, as the wolves die, then maybe the, some of the deer make their way back. And it's just this ongoing competition in here, okay? So as we're looking down through, okay, there are a bunch of different ways that we could think about writing these. But, I mean, in general here, I say, uh, you know, if g sub 1 and g sub 2 are linear, in the variables x and y, then we have a linear system. Um, so how I could write that would be like g sub 1 of t, so it's according to time, x and y. So this is like my wolves and my deer. Oh, well, then there's some constant, right, that's progressing my wolf count, plus some constant progressing my deer count. And then at the end, we throw in some function we call it f sub 1 for g sub 1 here, of time, okay, some constant inside there. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be a strict constant. This could actually be made up of x's and y's as well, okay. And it should follow relatively straightforward that g sub 2 then would just be equal to another constant and another constant plus some function of time, okay. And this actually is exactly how you generically write a linear system of differential equations. Okay. Great time to pause the video. Make sure you get that done. That's the general one that you'll find in the book. Okay, so here, now would be a great time to pause the video and actually read to write here. Okay, now that you've had a chance to read to there, this does do more than just predator and prey relationships. You can do radioactive decay. Uh, we can also do temperatures when one temperature is affecting the other one. Okay, like uh, you put a bunch of ice in a cooler, well, that cools down the cooler, right? But then it also affects the temperature of the pop, right? Or if you put pop in, so like there's just so many different variables that can go into play here. Now it says we will only do mixtures, okay? Only is way too strong of a word, okay? We will mainly do mixtures, okay, inside of tanks. Those are my favorite ones to do, okay? Which brings me to my first example, which you're going to need to read through, okay? So now you need to pause the video, read this through, and copy down all this information. Okay, now that you've had a chance to do that, my first task is to draw kind of a diagram representing this system. And, you know, you're going to have to, I'm going to have to apologize in advance for how bad my diagrams will be, okay, how bad these diagrams will be. But 
I'm going to do my absolute best to draw them. Here is my first tank, okay? This is tank A. And then if I do the same type of thing here for tank B, okay? I should probably round that edge, but that's okay. Tank B, now I'm taking some type of connector here, right? And they're actually dumping water into each other. And to get the system started, I actually dump into A, right? And so I'm having some type of system, right? Okay, and then what ends up happening is I, I actually need like another connection. Oh, that's a bad. Okay, so I, I actually need another connection, which connects down here to allow me to pump from A to B and from B to A. And what it told me in the problem is that at the end, I'm going to end up pumping out of B. So I have kind of this closed system, right? I have this closed loop. It told me in the problem that coming into tank A, I have water. And this water is coming in at three gallons per minute. Okay, that's what was stated in the problem. Now from A, I'm going to mix, right? I'm going to mix this water in here with some salt, right? And after I get it mixed, I actually end up pumping that into B at four gallons per minute. Okay. Okay, then this, this B tank then. Now let's talk about this B tank. Inside B now, it said that, okay, inside B I'm also mixing, right? But what happens here is some of B is getting pumped back into A, right? Some of B is getting pumped back into A, and that's a mix then. A mixture is also being dumped into A, one gallon per minute from the problem that you wrote down, okay? At any time, if you're confused on where I'm grabbing these numbers, go back, read the problem, okay? Let's pause the video and make sure you're figuring this stuff out or connecting where this is coming from. Now, at the very, very end, I'm pumping out. Well, if I'm pumping out from B, I know that's a mixture, and the mixture is pumping out at three gallons per minute. Okay. So as I'm looking at this system, right, at this system, all in all, right, if there's three gallons coming in, if there's three gallons coming in from water, right, three gallons coming in from water, and I have one gallon of mixture coming in from B, that is four total, right? So like here, if I write this down on the side here, tank A, tank A, let me get a different color here. It's orange. Tank A, A gets four gallons, and it also loses four gallons. Well, where is it losing from? Well, down here, right? I'm pushing that into B. Okay, so really A is what's known as a stable system. It's getting just as much as it's losing. If I'm looking at B now, if we focus on just B for a second, that B, it gets, well, how much is it getting? It's getting the four from A. Oh, that's it, four gallons. But it's losing, what? It loses one to A and it loses three just out. So it also loses four gallons. So that's also what's known as a closed system. Okay, that is a closed system. Okay, this is a nice little model to get us started. Okay, if you're confused on how this model got made, you need to pause the video and go back. Okay. Now that we've had a chance to, you know, completely understand the, the model, it says write a system of differential equations to model the amount of salt in each tank respectively. Okay, so it said each tank respectively, so each tank would need to get uh, modeled here, right? Well, here, maybe I'll start with tank A. I know in general even before I get there, I guess, it's always the rate in minus the rate out, right, which is equal to the rate in times the concentration of whatever it is in minus the rate out times the concentration 
of what's going on, right? So when I'm thinking about our situation for tank A, I know that it's getting three gallons per minute from the water. Okay, well even, oh even better. I think I did that one before if I try to align them with the colors here. I think I did that one in blue there, so maybe I'll try to keep the colors the same. So here in blue, right, I got three gallons per minute of water. Okay, well water is then zero pounds of salt per gallon, right? Plus, okay, well, what did it lose? It also lost something else, right? It also lost, lost isn't the right word, I suppose. It's also, it got this water here. It also gained this mixture. Okay, so it gained a mixture too. Well, that was one gallon per minute. Where did it get that from? Well, it got it from tank B. Oh, but B had salt in it, right? So this means that it's B of T here, okay? And the reason it has to be B of T is because this water that's going into A came from B. B had salt in it. So how much salt? Well, that depends on the time, which is exactly what we're going to model later with B tank B, right? So here we have this B, and it had 50 gallons inside of it from the original, okay? Now this, technically, this right here, okay, is all of this Rn. That's the rate N. That's the rate N to tank A, which means then I subtract, right? I'm subtracting the rate out. Okay, well, what's it losing? Well, it's losing this, oh, it's losing this four gallons. Okay, so that's minus four gallons per minute times the concentration. Well, it's coming out of itself, right? It's coming out of A, so the concentration is going to depend on time divided by the 50 gallons, right? Because there's going to be constantly 50 gallons in it. Well, how do we know there's constantly 50 gallons in it? Because it's losing 4 gallons a minute and it's gaining 4 gallons a minute. It's not getting any more inside there. If that was not a closed system there, we would have to update this 50 gallons. We would. We'd have to update that. Okay. Now, I know looking at this, it might seem like it's a lot, but really this can get simplified down really, really easy. This is the change in how much is in tank A, the amount of salt in tank A, according to time, is equal to, well, this three gallons, right? Three gallons times zero, well, that's zero, so I don't really have to worry about that. Now, one gallon times B of T, this is basically what, one over 50? And B of T is technically on top, but I like to drop it here to the side. So it's 1 50th, the amount of salt in tank B at any time, or at some time T, minus, okay, this is four over 50. Well, that's two over 25, and that is A of T. And there we've actually modeled the amount of salt in tank A at any time T, or I should say the amount of salt in tank A as it changes with respect to time, okay? If I do B real quick here, okay, this is gonna be the only example I do on this video, okay, on this video here. So now if I do B, get the color I need here. So tank B now, well tank B, Let's see if we can do this um, a little bit quicker, maybe slightly quicker. I don't want to go too fast for our first time. It's always R in minus R out. Okay, well, what is it getting? What is tank B getting? B gets this four gallons a minute from tank A, right? He gets that four gallons per minute from tank A. All right. So it gets four gallons per minute from tank A. Oh, it's coming from tank A, so that means that the amount of salt has to be according to what's in tank A, right? I can put pounds here. Divided by, well, okay, however much is in tank A. Well, we know that there'll be 50 gallons continuously in tank A because it's a closed system again, okay? 
Now that's what it's getting. What is it losing? Right? That's the only thing that it gets. So I need to subtract whatever it loses. Well, tank B loses one gallon to tank A. Okay, well, I did that one in purple, so it loses one gallon per minute from tank, oh, from itself to tank A. Well, that means that's B of T pounds per, well, it'll be 50, because again, this is a cl closed system there, right? It's a, it's getting just as much as it's losing. And here's what's, I mean, slightly tricky, maybe what I'll do to make it complete here, is this whole thing is gonna be the out, okay? This is the R out. Now it's also losing this mixture, right? This three gallons a minute, just regular out. So then I have to add in that mixture. Now I don't have as much space as I would like. This is three gallons per minute times, oh, it says it's losing out of B, right? Oh, well then this is another B of T over the 50. Okay, I know that kind of got scrunched there, but I think you guys kind of get it. And when you're when you're going to simplify this, just remember that this is plus a negative, negative in here. Okay, they both, you know, they both get subtracted. So that means that the change in tank B, according to time, for salt, this is salt, remember, would be, well, this is 4 over 50, that's 2 over 25, A of T. Now, I have a plus sign, but really, in reality, these are, these, this is a subtraction sign, right? But these two, this would be, well, maybe I'll go slowly. This is negative 150th B of T. And then this one's negative 350th B of T, which makes negative 450th, which is negative 225th B of T. Okay. And I have tank B modeled. And if we remember from up top, tank A's modeling was 150th B of T minus 225th A of T. And this would be our first system of differential equations. Okay. This is the only one I'm going to do on this video. I know I think I, I think on this video I ended up talking more than I really needed to, but it's really nice to just take our time through the very first one. Okay, I will be posting another video, which you'll need to watch, going over one more tank problem. Okay, I really do like the tanks tank problems here in this setup. If I have enough time, I will be making a third video doing population and or um, temperature.